What is going on? Welcome back to another video with Kapakoto One. Today we're hitting out another video in the series of 100 Days to Python Mastery. Uh, stick with us, still knocking out a couple of four uh, loops, if loops, and so forth. Um, building that muscle memory, getting those coding fingers rocking and rolling. So with that said, let's jump right into it. So, what do we have here first on the screen? Allow two inputs, a month and a day, and a program can spit out the season. So we have month equals input, type in a month, day equals integer of the input, select a numerical day. So um, I'll put May and select a numerical day. Let me put uh, 15, enter, season is spring. So what do we have here? We have X, Y, and Z. So we broke those up into three different categories and there are four seasons, but there's no need to get that crazy. You can do three. And for the last season, you can say, look, if it doesn't match X, Y, or Z, then this is the season it's going to be. So it's just, it's easier. It's less work that way. So for X, we have a list of January, February, March, Y, April, May, June, Z equals July, August, and September. Just a list there with putting into variables X, Y, and Z. If the month in X, so when we type in the month that we, it was the input, if the month is in X, so if the month is January, February, March, say it's winter. Else if the month is Y, print spring. If it's in Z, say summer else the season equals autumn and that's what I mean by the one two or three if you're not an X Y or Z then you're autumn because we did winter spring and summer already then on the bottom I have if the month so it would run through that it would get us it would get the 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 season that would be the first loop and then it goes if month is equal to March so first we're finding if the month is in X if it's in Y if it's in Z or if it's not and then we're looking at the specific months because you do know that seasons change based on the days of the month. So if the month is equal to March and the day is greater than 19, season equals spring. But if, or if the month is equal to June and the day is greater than 20, season equals summer. Well, let's look, I just want to look up at June. June is in Y. So Y would have normally printed spring. But here we're telling the code if the month is June, and the day is greater than 20, it's summer, it ain't spring. And that's why that code's important. Um, else if the month is September and the day is greater than 21, print autumn. Else if the month is equal to December and the day is greater than 20, season equals winter. Print season is, comma, season. Because um, you can see all of these are variables, season, 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 season. So let's see if that works. So I did May 15th, so May was in, uh, y, so Y should print out spring, and it printed spring, and I don't have May in any of my qualifiers down here. So real quick, if we put in March, so I have X, March is falling into X, so X equals winter, so when I first hit X, it's going to tell me it's thinking winter, and then when I ask for the numerical day, March and the day is greater, if it's greater than 19, so let's put in 22, so March up here in this loop is winter, but down here it is spring, Let's see what it gives me. It gives me spring. All right, great. So that's working. Going down the next code. Give me the give me date of birth, and I'll give you your sign. So month equals input. What is the month of your birth? Day equals integer of the input. What is the numerical day of your birth? So what is the month? Let's say somebody says May, and then they say, whoops, 15. Sign from the stars is Taurus. So all we did here, this was just tedious, nothing special. Um, if the month is December, sign equals Sagittarius. If the day is less than 22, else Capricorn. Else if month equals January, sign equals Capricorn. If day less than 20, else Aquarius. So that's all this is doing. This is just a good old if else statement. Um, all the way down. And again, we're saying your sign of the stars, that's our string. And then pulling in the sign there. Uh, so you can go, you can play with that, go through it. It's just it's tedious work, but again, we're building muscle memory from even typing all of these things. Lastly, we have program to find out the median of three values. Now the median, so you have median, you have mode, and you also have um, excuse me, the mean. So the mean we've seen before is the average. We've used that when we applied it to different projects. Um, the median just means give me the middle value. And if you have an even number of, of, uh, of integers, then it's going to take the two middle and it's going to average them. So it will take the two numbers, it will do the mean of the two numbers to give you the median. But if you have an odd number, then you actually have a median value. So A is a float, B is a float, C is a float. All three of those are inputs. And it just says first number, second number, third number. So we want to find the median of three values. So let's put in, it's asking me for the first number. Let's say I put in 10, enter, 
20, enter, and that. Oh, let's say 15. I don't want them to be in order yet. Enter. So it tells me the median is 15, and we know that's true because we know 15 is the middle number of those three digits. I did three just for the sake of simplicity. So what the code is saying, it's saying if A is greater than B, what we have to do is essentially go through three different scenarios with this, um, or rather two, and if it's not met in A or B, or rather if it's not met in one or two, then else it's going to be three. So we're just, we have to compare the different values. So if A is greater than B, if A is greater than B, which it's not, but then we would skip that and we would go down to else. If A is greater than C, A is greater than C, not, that would have been a false. Um, so let's go through, let's go through it line by line. If A is greater than B, if A is less than C, so if A is greater than B, let's say, um, let's actually do it this way. Let me do this. I wanted to make copy. Let me bring us in our test bed here and we'll run it as the test. So let's make A greater than B. Let's say A is 20 and B is 10. And let's make A greater than C. We'll make C 15. So we still have 15, I just changed the sequence of the numbers. So if A is greater than 20, uh, a, if A is greater than B, so 20 is greater than 10. If A is less than C, A is not less than C, so we skip it. Else if B is greater than C, B is not greater than C, so that's false. Else the median equals C, so the median equals 15, so that's true. So all it's just doing comparative operations. Else if A is greater than C, A is greater than C. Median equals A. Else if B is less than C, is B less than C? True. Then the median equals B. Else median equals C. So A is greater than C, so median equals A. And then we have print the median is and then printing out the median. So you may say, oh, wait a second. A is greater than C. Why didn't it print out A? Because 20 is greater than 15, so we should have said the median was 20. The reason is it never got to this code. It never got to the else code because it was it was satisfied in the first if statement, in the first if loop up here. Is A greater than B? Is 20 greater than 10? Yeah, so I can stay in this loop. If A is less than C, A is less than C? Nope. Is B greater than C? Is B greater than C? Nope. So the median has to be C. Now this, that's just doing logic trees. Um, so that's why none of this was run because this was met, we had met a true up here. So if A is less than B, so if A is less than B, which it's not here, let's do it though. Let's make A less than B and let's make C even greater. So then if A is greater than B, A is less than B. So this immediately becomes false. So we jump down to the else statement. If A is greater than C, A is greater than C, false. Go to your next line of code. B is less than C, true, then the median is B. And sure enough, it is here. Nothing magical about this. It's just it's it's just logic. Sorry, I kicked the table, made the camera move. It's just logic. Um, go through this, play with the numbers, get the code. Again, since coding is all just a matter of logical problem solving and creativity, this is the habit I want you to get into. I think that's it for the code. Yep, that's it for Jesus. 82 lines we went through today. Most of that was this whole uh, sign piece here. Um, so with that, take the code, play with it, learn what you got to learn, and I will see you guys back here for the next video.